Hi, welcome to our talk. I'm your host, Jim Tripp, in the spirit of art. Today our guest is Kathy Woodruff, a local artist from Old Lyme, Connecticut. And she's a carver, amongst other things, uh, mainly dealing in natural arts. I'd like to introduce you. Kathy, how are you doing? Good. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to have you here with us. You have some beautiful works here. Um, colors, colors, all I see is colors. <laughs> Very sparkly person. Yeah. <laughs> Now I wanted to, we're going to move uh, to your studio soon and uh, take a trip down there. And I'd like to introduce it a little bit. It, it's a beautiful place. Is this where you get your inspiration from? Well, um, for the Indian stuff, I guess it was because my mother is Shoshone Indian. So we talked about Indians a lot and uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to have my own totem pole. So I made it and it came out pretty good. So then I said, well, maybe I can start selling them. Now, it's a very natural place to live. Mm -hmm. I notice there's all, uh, when you drive in, it's a long driveway. And there's fields, tiered fields, and you have llamas. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I, I've only had animals. llamas for about a year now. But you have horses. Yep. It's just a beautiful place. Is, is this where your inspiration comes from? Oh, yeah, because I'm all alone out there. And, you know, it's, I like being alone and just letting the energy come into me and take over. And, I just start carving and... Does the quiet help you work? Oh, yeah. 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 And then when you're all done, you know, you don't even know you did it. Now, you mainly work outside. That's yeah. your studio. Yeah, in the sun. <laughs> in the sun. Yep. Next to the corral. Yep, get my energy from the sun. All right. Yep. Well, why don't we head down and look at your place? Okay. Let's okay. go. <laughs> Lights are down. Okay.
Okay, here we go. All right, this is a totem pole. And uh, remember the saying that money grows on trees? Well, it does, because this used to be a tree. So if I sell it, then I get some money. So money does grow on trees. But anyway, um, the colors are turquoise, red, and black. And they were the easiest colors for these Indians to make with the minerals that they had. So that's why you have the colors, but they work too. Like everybody likes these, this combination of colors. And uh, I made this totem pole about five or six years ago, and I didn't really know the meaning. And now the meaning, you know, the story behind it is just coming to me. And uh, it's kind of the story of the evolution of man, of every man's evolution. And he starts off at the bottom as a materialistic man, and then uh, the frog and his tongue is uh, kind of the sim uh, symbolic of the energy tickling his brain or energizing or exciting his brain to think that there's more than just the materialistic world. And then it goes up to the innocence of the deer, the gracefulness of the deer, state of grace. And then it goes to the eagle, which represents peace, friendship, higher spirituality. And through that, you uh, transcend to your other selves, your higher selves, and you get illumined. And you're, that's why the faces are white because uh, um, why are the faces white? Let's see. Because there's lots of light involved. And uh, these hats are uh, signify uh, giving away of everything that you have in order to receive what you want. And uh, it's uh, evolving into higher spirituality. That's why the center one is so high. And uh, he has his hands on himself to heal himself before he can heal anybody else. And um, want to see another piece? All right, Kathy. So tell me about this piece here. You were telling me that this is uh, one of your earliest pieces. Mm -hmm. It's called Salmon's Running. Salmon's Running. And why? Um, they're all giving thanks for being able to uh, have a food supply of the salmon. Now, you are, are you a salmon fisherman? No. No. Do you fish? No. I don't like to kill them. Ah. <laughs> so what, what, uh, what overwhelming energy got you to do this piece? Um, let's see. This is a lot of work. I mean, did this come from uh, someone you met? I mean, what possessed you to, to start off your, one of your first pieces and, and go at it this much? Um, just that the Indians were so thankful for everything that they got. And um, I just wanted to show, you know, how thankful Indians are mm -hmm. for whatever they receive. All right, so now at the bottom, what is it? what's on the bottom? It's the owl, but I don't know why he's there. Don't know why. Who? He's just Who? watching. Who? Huh? Who? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and you go up into the man. And I want to make like sure he's I see chanting. everything. He's, he's chanting. You know, he's giving thanks. Okay. And uh, the eagle is giving thanks because he eats the salmon too, and it, it has to do with spirituality, and you know his this ma the man's higher self, and uh, you know soaring into heaven and and obtaining spirituality. You know, well, the eagle in the uh, Indian lore is very uh, has healing qualities. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think at that point you were going through some kind of healing? Aren't we always? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose we are, but to call on the eagle is to call on the uh, to call on 
uh, the messenger from God, basically, mm -hmm. the great healer. So, and, and obviously this is uh, overwhelming. The eagle is on the crown. So it must have been covering you at that point. You were telling me a story about when you were carving outside uh, <clears throat> uh, a spirit guide or a, a man that used to stand behind you. Uh-huh. When I first started carving, um, it was like there was an Indian standing behind me with a robe on or, or a blanket around him. And he was just watching, and it just felt like he was, like, teaching me to carve. Hmm. Just guiding. Yeah. A guiding hand. Mm-hmm. Now, what kind of wood you, are you using here? Sassafras. Sassafras. Are all your pieces sassafras? Yeah, except for one that's gone um, that turned out to be oak. Oh, really? And I thought all my chisels were dull. <laughs> Very hard. <laughs> yeah, I made a mistake because the bark of sassafras and this chestnut oak looked the same. And uh, I kept sharpening all my chisels. <laughs> and um, then when I got all done, I had a friend of mine cut off the base flat because it's hard for me to do, to get it to stand straight. So this logger friend of mine cut it off for me. And as he was cutting it, he said, this is oak. And so then I knew all my chisels were OK. <laughs> <laughs> hard way to find out. Yeah. Uh, takes time. Uh, so. <clears throat> Like, you were telling me before about the eagle, the difference between an eagle and a raven uh -huh. when you're carving them. Uh, and your other piece, uh, you, you made the eagle, but actually it was a raven. It came to you later. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been an eagle for about uh, five or six years. And then all of a sudden I realized that he is an eagle, but he can transform into a raven. And the raven is um, the transformer. Shapeshifter. Yeah, mm. shapeshifter. Yeah, able to pass between the owl. This is very interesting. So this was your starting pole. Let's move along. Okay. Okay. And where did you go after that? Did you are uh, these masks right here? Did you start those at the same time frame? Mm. No, I think the masks were after the totem poles, or maybe in between. Not okay, really. How about this guy here? Um, this is when I had Lyme disease, and there's a lot of stress. I forced myself to do it, to, uh, to do something and try to make myself feel better. And uh, he, shows a, yeah, and he shows a lot of stress, and he's always sad. You know, he hasn't healed yet, but I think someday, you know, like... You, do you feel that the checks in the wood? None of them are checked except this one, I know. really. That's because when I did them, I didn't feel good, you know, and... Uh, it's like he still has to be healed. Now, is this the raven? Yep, this is the raven in the sun. And it's uh, a traditional Northwest Coast Indian legend about the beginning of time. And a magician hides the sun in a box. And the raven is very clever. And he gets the box and finally gets it open and releases the light to the world. And that's the story of the beginning of time. For the Northwest Coast Indian tribes, and is it the uh, the mask on the bottom? What does that stand for? Well, that's the sun. That is the sun. Yeah, but he's very pale. Like usually, when I do the sun, like this one, um, like you know, he's he's like energetic and and not. But this one, you know, is pale. To me, he looks pale and sick okay. because I was sick at the time that I did it. Now this is a beauty up here. Almost looks African because of yeah. the black. Yeah. It reminds me of ebony. Her name is Zunaqua. Zunaqua. And she's the spirit of the forest. She's one of the few female. One of the few females. Uh, in Indian Northwest Coast Indian art, and uh, they usually depicted her as, as kind of stupid. <laughs> stupid. I don't know why. Or forgiving. Um, I don't know. So that would, she would stand for Mother Earth, basically. Yeah, the spirit of the forest. Yeah, Mother Nature. Mother Nature. And usually she has arms out extended to welcome you. But it's kind of like she's always in a trance. That's why her eyes are closed. Um, Doesn't want to see what her children are doing. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, I don't know. There's something the matter with her too. Maybe that's me. You know, like she she has a crack. You know, maybe uh, 
when I evolve more, she'll like heal up. She'll fill in. Yeah. Now your mask's behind you. I wanted to ask you about this mask right here. The moon? That's yeah, the moon? Yeah, it's the moon. Okay. Can you take that down? Can I take it down? Yeah. Yeah, can we look at that? Mm-hmm. Is, is it hollow or solid? No, I never... It's solid. Yeah, I, yeah, I it's don't... It's really beautiful. Sometimes I hollow them out. That's the moon. Again, yeah. the eyes are closed. Is that because of night? Yeah, probably because he can't see. Yeah, it's dark. There's no light, so he doesn't need to open his eyes. What kind of feathers? Swan. Swan feathers. Very beautiful. Now, when did you make this piece? Oh, boy. Um, a year ago? A year ago. Maybe. Not right. really sure. So, do you steadily do masks and totems? and Is that where you're going? Yeah, that's what I'd like to just do, yeah. are totem poles and masks. All right. Let's look at your shields, too. I thought those were okay. really interesting. Can hang this baby back. Okay. Like all the totems and the masks are like northwest coast art, and these are southwest. And uh, I guess the Indian that would carry this around, you know, would want to have good luck at hunting. Okay. Or fishing, or you know, good. They see the fish. In yeah, it. good food supply. And uh, they might, you know, put this out in front of their teepee, you know, just so that uh, they'd have good luck. Now you do these hides For yourself. Food. Yeah. These are deer skins, and you put um, ashes and water, you mix it up into like a mud, and you put it on the skin side, and then in about four days, the, the hair falls off, and you can scrape it off, and then you have a rawhide, which this is, and um, then you wash it, and uh, I usually put it on a cement floor because it sucks all the water out of it, and it makes it flat, and then when I want to use them, I can just wet them again and do this, I make like a round sapling hoop. It's what the Indians used to do. It's not my thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, they did it. And you just wrap it around, let it dry, and uh, we have the drums over here. Can you, can you get over there? You can't get over there. Okay. <laughs> but I make drums, too. I'll get one. Okay. These are beautiful. <laughs> And, um, These are really nice. These are logs. Yeah, nice this, this was a sassafras tree that the ants helped me to uh, hollow out. Like, they already hollowed it out, and then I just had to, like, you know, clean it up a little bit. And then I just put the skins on it. And right now it's not, you have to, like, heat it up to get it really tight, and then it makes a good sound. Right now it's not too good because it's been humid out, it's been raining. Oh, so it loosens up. Yeah. But if you put it in front of the fireplace and let the heat tighten it up, you get a good sound. So you do some drumming yourself? No, I'm not musically inclined. No. <laughs> My dog is, though. <laughs> Wait, I want to see that. <laughs> you do? Yeah. You want me to get her? No, no. <laughs> Have you seen her? Drum? Yeah. She actually drums? Oh, yeah. Or do you do the drumming? No, I can't drum, but when I hold her, her paws, then I can drum. She has all the talent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, let's move over here. This is a really interesting piece. The bear? The bear. Well, see, this one's hollowed out. And it's not hollowed out enough, but they used to wear these. And then they would get to feel just like the bear. And, uh, you know, they'd, they'd gain a, a strength of courage and ferociousness. ferociousness. So they'd you gain know, they'd, the spirit of the bear. Right, they'd dance around with these, you know, and do all their little dances. and. They would feel like the bear, and then they could go out and, and do hunt. some ferocious killing. Or, or just be courageous, you know. Or hibernation. Yeah, or else they could hibernate, you know, get through the winter. Ferocious with, sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> Not, Dreaming. Yeah, do a lot of uh, meditation. That's right. The bear, the bear, I was told, doesn't, when he's hibernating, he doesn't actually sleep. He goes into an altered state in a different world, and he actually lives in a different place at that and time. And he slows down his metabolism, which we should do. Yeah, now we go faster in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> Work harder. Yeah. Make more money. Now here, this lizard, I love this lizard. Now what's he made out of? Um, I think that's a laurel root, and I found him in a bog harrow, and uh, he was all there except for one leg. I had to stick in one leg. 
Well, and what does the lizard represent? You know that I don't. You tell me. You know. Uh, you, the dream. What did you say? The dreamer. <laughs> the dreamer. Yeah, he knows more than I do. Oh. You do. And here it is. <laughs> it's all here for us to see. <laughs> He's shy. The dreamer, the dreamer. Um, I don't know. I just put this on here today. You know, it was just like the That's bells the before. Mother of Pearl. Mm hmm Okay, now these masks are really, you're getting uh, much larger here. Uh, are these suns? Both? Yep, these are sun masks. Both sun masks. And uh, everybody idolizes the sun because it's our source, you know, of energy. And uh, they all seem pretty happy and mellow and... This guy is uh, spewing out energy. This guy is just laying back and knows, you know, that the energy is just going to come out. Where would the Indians use these? Uh, would they put them over their lodges or for protection? Or All over the place. Everywhere? They just, yeah, they wanted a lot of good energy around. The more good energy, the better. Mm. Now this, this is a beauty. Mm -hmm. I love this. Can you go? I see the fish again. Yeah, the salmon. Tell me the story. Well, the bear eats the salmon. Uh, it's another gratitude pole. And uh, I guess, you know, this sun is in like the bear's head, high spirituality, and it's in the heart of the eagle. Um, two good places to be, you know, good energy. And um, the eagle and the bear both eat the salmon. It's another gratitude, you know, being thankful for food. Mm. Um, so do you have, uh, you, you sell quite a few of these. You have them all over, all over. You have, uh, I'm just starting to get to sell them. I've sold, you know, not that many really. Well, from Maine to New York to... Yeah, there's one in Maine and one in Arizona. Arizona. And uh, John Tesh has a sun mask of mine. <laughs> and Connie Seleka, um, a friend of mine bought a sun mask and sent them for a wedding present. Yeah. I didn't know who they were before he told me. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a nice present. Yeah. <laughs> Think of me. It's my birthday. Yeah, yeah, coming yeah, up. yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the snakes here. Yeah. These are really hot. Tell me about the snakes. Um, all kinds of snakes on the I don't table. know. I was over at a friend's house and he had a little brass snake on his table and it was all curvy. And I like curves. And I just got the idea. Um, Is that right if I touch these? Yeah of making snakes and I looked at the <laughs> at these bushes that have I'm not gonna make some laurel um, but these certain bushes have curved branches and uh, so I just go walking through the bushes and I see a curved branch and I cut it off and I make a snake out of it these are coral snakes yep those are coral snakes, coral snakes. very South deadly 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 snakes southwest but see you're touching it and nothing's happening <laughs> this is snake medicine <laughs> supposed to get better now yeah yeah you will and your other snakes let's look at your other um snakes you have all kinds of wings yep. i love this one with the wings yeah i guess this is a flying serpent of some kind so i make things i don't know why you know the meeting comes later but this is probably a female i don't know because of the egg in her mouth i don't know why it just seems like it's a female and this is a male big insane. a rattlesnake no yep. problem there yeah so you say you make a lot of things and you really the meanings don't, like the poles, the meanings don't come to you until much later. Yeah, like years later. Because, um, um, yeah, it's like you just kind of like, well, you're an artist, you know, you just kind of like black out when you're making things. Mm -hmm. And you just let, like, the spirit of life run through you or flow through you. And you get these creations and you don't even know that you've done it. And so then, like, with me, it's like years later, I find out, the stories behind them, like with the totem poles, and yeah, you, know, you can't really read about it because um, they just didn't write down the meanings. Right. So you have to. It just. They were personal things. Yeah, and they Very just come personal. to you later on. So I'm just starting to understand why I do all this. So it's even hard for me to talk right now. Welcome back to our to our talk. Uh, what you've just seen is Kathy Woodruff's uh, home and studio. She really works outside most of the time, but <coughs> her, her home is like a gallery of, of beauty. That was, thank you. Mm -hmm. That was uh, an incredible spot you have. 
I, I felt know. like I was in the mountains. Yeah, I'm lucky. I'd say you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not just lucky, you, all, you also built your home. Yeah, yeah. It was my ideas, and my ex-husband and I built it, and we were fortunate to have two friends that helped us a lot, and we had fun. It was a f just a fun thing to do. So you're not just a carver, you actually have carpentry skills mm -hmm. and many other skills. Wonder Woman. You wonder where I am. <laughs> and you work hard at the farm, too. Yeah. I have lots of animals. and. So have a lot of energy. Yeah. Yeah, i got to keep going. So what are your next plans, your carvings? Um, I'm going to do another totem pole. You know, I want to do mostly totem poles and masks. And the next one is... I left a branch coming out of the top so that can be the beak of the eagle, mm -hmm. like this one back here. So the branches will be actually be coming out as beaks and wings mm -hmm. and that type of thing? Yeah. Have you done that before? Or is oh, it, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. But I usually attach the wings. I'll make you know, the wings and attach them on the back. Now, do people come to you and find you to yeah, make these for them? Yeah, sometimes I advertise a little bit, but it's so expensive that uh, I don't do it that often. But sometimes it's word of mouth, or I'll have one in another town, and someone will see it and mm -hmm. call me up. And That's you know. nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, free <laughs> so, advertising. Yeah, the best kind. Yeah. So how long have you been living there? Oh, gosh, 20 years at least. And I've been carving for about eight years. What ha how did you shift in the carving? Um, my mother is part Shoshone, and we always liked Indians together. And uh, all of a sudden, I just decided I wanted to have my own totem pole, so I made it, uh, mostly with a chainsaw, and then I just took off the edges with a chisel. And it um, didn't so turn out too bad. You're so. self-taught. Yeah. And uh, it didn't turn out that bad, so I said, well, maybe I can start selling some, you know. I noticed all the feathers and the different snake skins. They're all kinds of really interesting. Yeah, roadkill. Yeah, oh, roadkill. <laughs> Lots of roadkill. <laughs> well, do you, what do you make with the roadkill? Uh, I use the, the fur for peace pipes and uh, the deer skin I use for drums. And uh, people give me turkeys. I use the turkey feathers for the peace pipes and hang them off the medicine shields that you saw before. Mm -hmm. Or are we seeing that later? Um, um, all kinds of stuff. All kinds of yeah. stuff. Yeah. So you can put them on the mask. I put the feathers on a mask, and this guy could have put fur on him. And now the colors, these are natural colors that you um, use? These are the colors, the red, the black, and the turquoise are the, are the colors that were the easiest for the Indians to make. And uh, I didn't do my homework, so I can't tell you how they did it, but... Berries and things like that. Probably, yeah. Different dyes. Um, Turquoise, I think, was some kind of a mineral or something. But, um, yeah, and they turned out to be very effective colors, so. Very effective. Yeah. They really yeah. come right out at you. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to take a commercial break now, but when we come back, I'd like to uh, show and go through other works you okay. can do. Multi-talented. Thanks. All right, we'll be right back.
art is a process that fills our lives. See it. Enjoy it. This public service announcement is brought to you by the Griffiths Art Center, New London, Connecticut. Welcome back to our talk. <coughs> We're here with Kathy Woodruff. We were just talking a little bit more uh, about the totem poles and where they're from. Where did they originally come from? Uh, the Pacific Northwest Coast of America. And uh, some of the tribes were uh, Tlingit, Haida, Coast Salish, Bella Coola. So that's up uh, Canada way. Yep. In British Columbia, Alaska. Uh, Alaska, too. Yep. Now they were, uh, you were telling me they were post and beam houses? Yeah, their houses they, were big post. Big lodges? Yeah, post and beam. And they put like masks over the front of them. And that, that's called sisals. This particular the, mask? Right, the two-headed sea serpent. And uh, he was to protect their home from evil spirits. And he was also a welcoming to the good spirits. Sounds almost Viking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, inside their homes, they had house posts. They were totem poles that held up the, the structure, main structures, beam structures in their homes. So they you know, had totem poles on each end holding them up. So it they weren't small homes. They were no. massive Yeah, they were big. Lodges. Because a, a lot of families lived in there. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Alaska, yeah. cold winter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lots of fires inside. Mm. All right, now let's, you have uh, many other works here. You, it's not just carving you do. You also do everything from print, printing, shirts, uh, to leather work. Can I pull sure. this out? This leather. Now this is absolutely beautiful. Can you tell me a little bit about yeah. this? This is uh, actually two hides. The front one is a whole deer hide. These are his legs up here. These are, if Jim held it up a little more, you could see his legs are down here. And then there's another whole skin in the back. And then this lapel, lapel thing was made out of another skin. And I beaded all this. These are beautiful beads. And uh, Now, do you wear this? This year's? Once in a while. I, I wore it to a, uh, a little kid, a school thing on Indians and had them all make headbands. And do you so go to the powwows in the area? I do, but I don't wear that. I just go to watch. Ah. Well, you should wear it next yeah, time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I should. Yeah, what else do you have here? Um, well, the peace pipes. Okay. If you want to hold them. Yes. But um, this is a cherry burl. It's a horse. These are turkey feathers and beads. And this is a sumac stem that has a very soft pith. And you take a, an iron rod and heat it up in the fireplace, red hot, and then it just burns through really quick. So you've got a hole. And uh, when the Indians smoked them, they were for ceremonies. They pray to the gods for something, good harvest or whatever. And uh, they would send the smoke. And as the smoke went up to heaven, that was their prayers going up. Mm. And then they would also let heaven smoke, so they'd hold it like this. But they never carried it around like this. They would always take it apart and take the feathers off too. And then when they were going to do the ceremony, they would put them together, male, female. Oh, so the bonding of male and female right. in the ceremony. Mm -hmm. So it brought all, all things together. All the energy together. Yep. And the animals with the feather, with yep. what it was made of. The feathers, out. the spirit of the the bird, the a horse. Very grounding type of yeah. ceremony. Mm -hmm. You also have other carvings here. Um, yeah, I do woodcuts. And uh, I take material and uh, put the paint on the woodcut. Or you can hold that one up and show well, it's it. It's like the shirt you have on. Yeah, I made the sh it's, yeah, the design from the shirt I made. Okay. So you'd put paint on this. You have the material laying out. Put paint on this, turn it over the material, press it down, and then do it. Keep doing it. You know, use any colors you want. And, uh, I was amazed that you were telling me what this, this was made out of. Yeah, it's homos oak. I used to do it out of wood, but then when you wash the paint out, the board kind of warps sometimes, so it's hard to get a, you know, push it down mm -hmm. and get all the design on it. But so this, the homos oak, bends easy, so well, you can stand on it. Homos oak is a ceiling tile. Yeah. It's a, it's a, that, yeah. I, was, I was shocked. Well, and plus, <laughs> I use a router, so it's really easy with this stuff ah. because it just, it's really quick, takes it out quick. Very nice. Well, let's, you have a few of them here. Yep. Let me shift these up. These are really hot. Okay, this is a... This is a, a zebra. A zebra. And 
you know, you can put this on, a, on the material and then connect this, and you get, you know, connect, you know, so you this connect it all around. around. Connect it all around, and then it, it makes a really nice design. But this actually I got from a, a zebra design. Okay, beautiful colors. Yeah. I'd like to see some more, some of the shirts. Yeah. Okay, let's see. We have another one on the bottom here. It's a pretty wild one. Uh, this I got from a design from water. This was really hard to make because I, I did it all with a razor blade. So my finger was killing me after I did it. <laughs> <laughs> all cut up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have to. Uh, this doesn't look as good because it, you can't see all the variations because the black filled in the lines, but it comes out really intricate and very it almost fancy. Like, uh, it almost looks like the grain of a tree yep, also. Yeah, it does in the way. middle. Yeah, but that was actually the ripples in the water. So you had to suffer for your art for yeah. this one. <laughs> Cut yourself up. Yeah. All yeah, right. Well, when I first started carving, it was funny because uh, I kept like, like hitting my hand, you know, with a mallet, you know. And missing. The, yeah, now I don't even have to look, you know, I just, I can hit it. Is it's it a rhythm practice. that you use? Uh, yeah, I, um... What do you think know. about when you're carving? Nothing. <laughs> do you really go blank? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just, well, when I first am going to start a totem pole, I get real nervous, and I look at this log, you know, and I go, oh, my God, this will never be anything. And then I start it, and then in about a half an hour, I start to feel good because it start, I can see that it's starting to look like something, and, oh, maybe it'll look pretty good. And then the better it looks, the more excited I get. And then I just start getting more confidence, um, which is the energy of life, you know, coming into you. And you just go with it, and then it's like you're just magic. You can, you can do any, you can do no wrong. <laughs> it know? just comes together. Yeah, you do no wrong. It's going to work no matter what you do. Now you told me about an, an old man standing behind you yeah. as you carved. Yeah, when I first started carving, you know, the Indian totem poles, it was like I could see, like, a man. Uh, Spirit. Yeah, in a robe. I mean, not... Yeah, it was like a form, and he was in a robe, and he was just kind of standing like an Indian. And I'd look around, nothing there, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Just have that feeling over your yeah, shoulder that he was yeah. watching you. Yeah, and it was like, uh, you know, it was kind of like a helping me Spirit uh, spiritually guide. to, you know, to do it. And uh, he's not there anymore, or maybe he's going to come back, I don't know. But maybe he thinks I'm, I'm good enough just to do it by myself. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't doubt where you live that that was, uh, Indians were, lived all over that area. Yeah. It's absolutely beautiful. Near the river, yeah. mouth of the Connecticut, and the, the shore was right there. So I wouldn't doubt that your spirit guides are. Yeah. Well, there was over one here. field that we cleared, and uh, there were all these mounds of stones about 20 feet apart, like, oh, God, at least 100 of them. Wow. And I picked them all up by hand and put them on the walls because all the walls were there. We just had to fix them up. So they weren't just plowed stones. They were actually placed. Oh, there was, somebody took these little stones. I mean, they're anywhere from this big to this big, and they were all mounds. So I'm going to try to find out what that's all about. I mm -hmm. should have done it before I picked them up. but It's because they have local digs mm -hmm. in the area. Yeah. They found quite a bit of uh, artifacts in that area. So maybe they area. were you know, burial sites or something. I don't know. Jeez. Well, you would have found things. I didn't other dig than that. down in. Right. So I don't know right. what's under there. Hmm. So could have been a ceremonial site also. Yeah. You get the feeling when you're at your house that you're in a different world. Mm. Oh yeah. It feels like a mountain lodge, like you're yeah. way up in oh, somewhere. I know. Yeah. And it's great. Yeah. I loved it. I know. Everybody that comes there says they feel calm and comfortable, which is makes me feel really good, you know. Mm. So uh, overall, I could see where your, your inspiration comes from, nature, mm -hmm. uh, the animals. Where do you think it's bringing you? Um, it's helping me uh, stay on a spiritual path, you know, especially doing the totem poles because the Indians of the Northwest were so spiritual uh, and so thankful for everything that, you know, all the food they got, the furs they got from the animals. They wanted to link up with them spiritually so that they could thank them and also so that they could have some of their virtues, you know, the courageousness of the bear and the friendship and, and peace and spirituality of the eagle. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they put themselves on these totem poles 
with the animals so their con connectedness would be always visible to themselves. Yes, today's society seems to separate themselves mm. from the animal kingdom. Uh, and that doesn't seem right because mm. the animals are disappearing now. Right. We're not taking care of them. We're not, we're not in gratitude to them, you know, for what they've given us. Well. And we exploit them, so. Well, hopefully <laughs> that'll change. Yeah. People will become more aware, hopefully. Well, I want to thank you for being on the show with us and sharing all this okay. information and, and beautiful work. And I hope to see you again sometime. Okay, thanks. All right. This has been Art Talk. I'm your host, Jim Tripp, in the spirit of art. Thank you for joining us.